Bronco. Again, the good protection. And Elway sliding. And short of the first down by a considerable margin. So the Broncos finally are stopped on a drive. Watch uh, Bill Moss again to show you how much desire he has. Two men on the block, Bishop and Bryan. Now Elway starts scrambling. Now watch Moss take off. Big, strong, young lineman. Runs him out of bounds. Now, he says, if I run much further, I'm going to pull a hamstring or something. Not many defensive linemen pulling hamstrings. Uh, Chris Norman, the Denver punter, has had a quiet day. This is his first attempt. He's back at his point. He had a tremendous day last week against Seattle. Here's Garcia Lane. Beautiful punt by Norman. And Lane to the 20. Glenn Hyde on the stop. A 55-yard punt by Norman. But a flag has been thrown. We're going to get a clip on 34 Burris for the Kansas City Chiefs way upfield. Illegal block, number 34, on the return, first down. That's what the call is. That's Lloyd Burris in his fifth year out of Maryland. And they move it back to the 10-yard uh, line. Congratulations on the uh, Denver bench for the 55-yard punt by Chris Norman. Was it? And Kansas City first down from the 10. Bill Kenny was backed up pretty good in the first half by Rulon Jones. Missed one snap. Todd Blackledge came on, handed it off for the uh, Kansas City touchdown to Ethan Horton. But Kenny is back in there. Throw it out to the 17, the outside linebacker, Ken Woodard, on the stop. Chiefs are trying to get a running game going, and they know they have to pass. Rulon Jones, 75 on the left side, going against Baldinger, number 77, who is in there now at left tackle, gets blown to the inside. Good first down play, picks up six or seven for the Chiefs. Second down and three at the 17. Safety, Tony Lilly. Herman Hurd had a big game against Denver here last year. In fact, the best of his NFL career with 133 total yards. But Kansas City not able to get it going on the ground. Hurd had a couple of good runs in the first half. Mike Pruitt showing some signs, but not much else. It's a third down and one coming up. 27 to 7, the start of the second half. Kansas City can throw the ball, but you just can't throw it all the time. They need to make some first downs to get back in the ballgame. Third and one from the 19, and here is her slashing for the first down. The way they're going to get back in the ballgame, Marv, is to make the first downs, to get some drive, some momentum going. They have the type of offense that can catch up. They've got the wide receivers and the passer. They just need the protection and a little bit of running game just to offset the pass. First down for Kansas City at the 22. Herman Hurd suffered a concussion two weeks ago against the Chargers. And the coaching staff says it has affected his game. Bill Kenny calling it out. was right there and Kenny was able to get it away. You know, Kenny, normally not your most agile quarterback as we look at Rulon Jones, 75, taking a charge to the inside and still hustling after Kenny and kissing him, similar to what he did earlier in the ball game. Now watch King, 46, as he comes out of the backfield and he keeps sliding the opposite direction. Mecklenburg, 77, who had dropped off, goes over and makes the stop. Up second and two. Kenny is now seven for 14. And Pruitt is stopped right up the line by Ken Woodard. Woodard, the outside linebacker on the right, involved in a host of tackles here today. 
linebacking unit of Ryan Woodard, Music, Mecklenburg. Woodard uh, playing for uh, the injured Tom Jackson. Jackson getting into the ball games a little bit more each week, coming back from knee surgery in preseason. But Woodard is an outstanding player, maybe the uh, second or third quickest uh, Bronco on the team. Led the uh, uh, Broncos in special team tackles last year. Third down and two at the 30. to the outside they have the speed that can break a big one Dennis Smith misses a tackle and now it's a foot race Tony Lilly tried to get him to fumble good play by the Chiefs and Smith misses a tackle and a big play involved because of the man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary first catch today by Page did not catch a pass last week against the Rams first down at the Denver 16. and good stop by Hart 53 yard pass play the longest play of the season for the Kansas City Chiefs and it was just a short pass it shows you the type of speed that the Chiefs receivers have especially Paige Kenny didn't have a lot of time is doing a little bit more in the pocket because he is stepping around he doesn't look graceful but he's doing enough to give his receivers a little bit more time second and nine from outside the 15. Kenny throwing end zone overthrows Henry Marshall. Tony Lilly on the coverage of Marshall. Eight minutes remaining. Third quarter from Arrowhead in Kansas City. And Denver leading Kansas City by the score of 27 to 7. Chiefs coming at three and four. They've lost four of the last five. They opened the season strong, winning three of four, including victories over Seattle and the Los Angeles Raiders, but they've gone the other way. It's a third down and nine. Kenny with all kinds of time. And then pops one to the end zone. Intended for Marshall. The Broncos were just sitting back. There's not a lot of room to cover down there when you're inside the 15-yard line. They had eight men dropping back in zone coverages, all looking back at Kenny. They saw him as well as the receivers. Kenny just had to throw it away. You take a look at all the blue helmets and the white jerseys back there. They're spreading themselves out, covering the area, using the back line of the end zone as a defender and the Chiefs have to settle for a field goal attempt 33 yard attempt Nick Lowry 12 for 14 on the season has not missed a field goal inside the 50 this season and this is from 50 and 55 and Lowry puts it through just under eight remaining third quarter and Denver now leading Kansas City 27 10 from Arrowhead in Kansas City. And the kickoff handled by Vance Johnson of Denver. Gets across the 20-yard line. So the ball spotted at the 22. First down from that point as we check the scoreboard. Seattle leading the Jets 14-0 uh, at Giants Stadium. Not this point in front of Miami in the third quarter, 24-14. Chicago. Leading Minnesota 13-7 in the third. Washington over Cleveland 14-0. St. Louis in front of Houston 10-6. Dallas coming from behind to lead Atlanta. First down from the 22-yard line. Watson in motion. And here's Steve Sewell, the rookie from Oklahoma, the Broncos' first round Steve draft pick. 
Back to the scoreboard, New England pulling in front of Tampa Bay in the third quarter. And Buffalo doing it to Philadelphia, 17-0 in the third. Well, that'll bring us up to date. Here in Kansas City, the Denver Broncos having us their way against the Kansas City Chiefs, a 27-10 lead. Sewell again. We have seven minutes remaining in this third quarter. For those of you who may have tuned in recently, Sammy Winder has not played at all because of a case of the flu, so Dan Reeves sitting him out, but Winder would be available if needed. And Gerald Wilhite, who got off with a good start, 55 yards on the ground, two touchdowns, suffered a concussion late in the first half, so he is through for the day. And the Broncos going with the combination of Gene Lang, a second-year player, and the rookie Steve Sewell. Again, getting much time incompleted. Jerry Blanton with the hit on Gene Lang. Almost picked it off. It was a little play action, and, and Blanton going over to Lang on his coverage. We'll see the play action fake. Now, Blanton, 57 at the top, out of your picture now, is just going over to cover his man, and screens are not good on man-to-man -man coverage because the linebacker is just going to go sit right in his pocket. And here's the second part of the day for Chris Norman. I mentioned that outstanding game last week against Seattle. Career high 11 punts, hitting four inside the 20 and five over 50 yards to earn a game ball. And just did get it away. Albert Lewis nearly came up with the block. Here's Garcia Lane. A lot of dancing by Garcia, but a short pickup. 37-yard punt. Clarence K on the stop of Lane. We almost had our third punt. Here is Lewis right here. The inside man will come, and he'll come around and almost makes the block. Earlier, Denver blocking two punts attempted by Jim Arnold of Kansas City. Day at the races here on NBC. First out of the 43 for the Kansas City Chiefs. Run out by Tony Lilly and the Chiefs showing some signs after the terrible start. A 24-yard pass play. Take a look from the end zone view. Music 58 is blitzing. Mecklenburg 77 gets his man in front of him, but the other one heard is open also. Makes it the defender miss, and for good yardage, Kansas City with the best starting position of the entire ball game is inside the 35 now at the Broncos. First down at the 33. Denver leading Kansas City 27 to 10. Six minutes left, third quarter. And here's Pruitt. Down to the 30, Jim Ryan on the stop. Mike Pruitt reported to the Chiefs this past Wednesday, signed as a free agent after he was cut by uh, Buffalo, has an illustrious uh, nine years with the Cleveland Browns, an all-pro career. He is the Browns' third all-time leading rusher. The reason he can play coming in on Wednesday and the following Sunday, uh, Marv, is the Cleveland Browns had the same numbering system and the terminology was very similar, so hence he can play in three or four days. Second down and seven. The three-yard pickup by Pruitt. And Kenny going sideline and completes again to Carlos Carson. Lewis Wright pushed him out. It is another first down for the Chiefs, a 15-yard advance. We talked early on about the offensive line of the Chiefs. Here's Mecklenburg and Jones. They like to put them together. Now watch him cross, but the two offensive linemen in front of him do a pretty good job. Now they get some good penetration. Mecklenburg gets into the pocket, but Kenny is deep enough that he can get the ball off. Bill Kenny now, 10 for 19, 131 yards, hitting Carson, as you saw, for a third time, has a first down at the Denver 16. Quick release and broken up and 
intended for Carson. Ken Woodard, the linebacker, just getting a piece of it. When the Broncos go to their nickel, they take all their linebackers out except Woodard. Woodard is their best defensive back, uh, linebacker coverage, and you can see why, because they let him cover Carson. Now, he doesn't have to run very far because the back of the end zone is there, but he's very aware and sees the ball coming because Carson looked back for it and knocks it away. Carlos Carson who had few problems earlier this year. That time stopped by Ken Woodard, setting up a second and 10 at the 16. And they go to the ground, a big hole for Herman Hurd. Lilly with that ankle tackle on Hurd. And the ball spotted close to the first down marker. What's the block here by the center rush on the linebacker? The play is going to come right up the middle of, of the field. It's a little draw play. That's 48 Robbins in there playing coverage on his uh, on his man. And here comes the tackle. Good play to save the touchdown. Those, line, those defensive backs, when they get in there on nickel situations for coverage, they don't expect the lineman to come out and block, and that time Robbins was knocked off his feet by the center. So third down play, third and one. <laughs> and Pruitt is stopped back behind the line. Rulon Jones, Ken Woodard combining. And uh, the crowd here at Arrowhead would like to see the Chiefs go for the six, and they will. Well, I think you have to go for it, the situation being that you're 17 points behind. The problem is, you're not a very good running team, and he's put in both of his wide receivers again, so it's going to be a spread formation, and they're going to spread them out. Whether or not they throw the ball is another thing, but they're going back to their passing formation. So Joe, this, Joe Collier on the sideline. And this is uh, the biggest play of the ball game. Double attempt by Kenny as Rulon Jones had him within the grasp. There is Rulon. The right guard, Bob Olderman, made the reception. <laughs> <laughs> He's a rookie. He didn't know that uh, linemen in the NFL were, uh, were eligible receivers. And as you saw, sack number 30 by the Broncos. Rulon Jones having his best year. Dan Reeves says he hasn't played a bad game all year. Hey. Kenny just holding the ball too long. You got to have the clock in your head as you see Mecklenburg and Jones on the rush. We'll be right back. Down at their 15 following the sack by Ron Jones. And Lang out to the 20-yard line. Three and a half remaining, third quarter. Kansas City with a big opportunity to get back in it, but it was Jones getting to the quarterback, Kenny. And there you see the Broncos who have had it all over the Chiefs on the ground. Chiefs having trouble running, and that was a good indication. They had a third and one and lost a yard and missed it on fourth and two, a critical period in the ball game. Second and five from the 20. K. And a first down for Denver. Jerry Blanton, inside linebacker, on the stop. A couple yep. of minutes ago, a enormous roar from the crowd. In fact, uh, the loudest we've heard today. They have not had much to cheer about. Message board wishing good luck to the Kansas City Royals in game number seven tonight to be played just across the way from Arrowhead. First down at the 29. Here's Lang again. Out to the 34-yard line. Picked up five. Blanton on the stop. Well, Marv, the Broncos' offense is really uh, changing in the last couple of, of weeks as we'll see the blocking up front. Brian on Moss had his arm out. Could have been called for uh, holding, but... Elway was throwing downfield a lot early on. Now he hasn't been throwing the ball downfield so much. A lot of short, safe passes where he wouldn't get uh, anything picked off. No turnovers. Their defense is really playing well, and they're really playing that strength. Dan Reeves not 
pleased with the Denver offense, particularly in the second half against Seattle last week. Playing once again. All right, we're set for another update. Let's go to Ahmad Rashad and NFL 85. So a wild one at the Silver Dome. I figured Miami would have a tough time beating Detroit up there. They've been kind of hot and cold, but they beat San Francisco in that same state. Third down, about a yard. And the rookie, Sewell, has picked it up. Steve Sewell, first round draft pick from Oklahoma, getting more of an opportunity today and has run well. Sometimes that happens. Sewell not getting an opportunity to run that much because of Winder and, and Will Height. Both of them are out of the ball game at this point, and now Sewell has to. He's uh, pushed into the thing with uh, Gene Lang. I'm impressed the way Lord has had went up for that first down, and I'm sure Dan Reeves was also. Has the first down at the 41. We're down to 20 seconds left, third quarter. Butch Johnson. And yes, it is a completed pass for a first down. Butch Johnson. The whole line pulls to the right as Elway rolls to his left as clear vision. Now he just has to make sure that he gets the ball to him, and he obviously was uh, clearly in bounds uh, on the reception. First catch of the day for Johnson, a 12-yard pickup. Only eight seconds remaining. Third quarter. And here's Lang. Breaking tackle. Lang. Ball down by Albert Lewis. A 26-yard run. And another beauty by Lang. Number 50, Calvin Daniels on the left side had an opportunity because he was blitzing to get him in the backfield. Lang makes a good move, tough running and poor tackling. Three quarters complete. We'll be back after these messages from your local. To that uh, long run by Gene Lang. It is a first down at the Kansas City 21-yard line. And the Bronco defense coming up with a two big plays on the previous series by the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, stopping them inside the 20-yard line. And of course, Dan has got to be happy. His offense is playing well. His defense is playing well. And his special teams are going well. What more can you ask? Lang now 61 yards, 12 carries. Here's Sewell coming back. And Sewell inside the 15-yard line. Lloyd Burris, the strong safety, making the stop. One thing defensive linemen don't like to do is, uh, is chase a lineman. Here is Moss. Now watch as he chases back and forth. Sewell, as he, as he uh, Brian, tries to block him. Scrapes him off there. Now watch when he <laughs> he said, wait, wait a minute. I'm gonna get tripped up here and go down in the fire. Normally he's chasing from sideline to sideline. Moss coming off a good one last week against the Rams. Sewell has now run for 42 yards, just picked up nine. And here's Sewell picking up the first down. Hart still on the tackle. Still Moss and Bell up front. Daniels, Radisek, Spaney, and Payne, the linebackers. Lewis, Cherry, Burris, and Ross in the secondary. And they have had a very long day. Well, what they need to do is come up with some turnovers. They had 16 in the first four games and no turnovers by the Kansas City defense the last three. They haven't had any today, and they need something to create some momentum for their offense. Denver first and goal at the nine. Sewell, the lone deep back. And here's Sewell. To the six. Minute and a half gone by. Fourth quarter. That's Gary Kubiak, the backup quarterback, who has bailed out the uh, Broncos uh, from time to time in his third year out of the Texas A&M. And you see Denver doing it with hand signals. Some people in Denver felt the Bronco offense via the signal route were being intercepted by opponents and they did change from hand signals to uh, players bringing in the plays. And Reeves feels the signals uh, are not being stolen. That was uh, discussed for some time a couple of weeks back. Here's Sewell. And 
and he is gang tackled, but it wasn't easy. Tough running by Sewell. He may uh, uh, giving the opportunity here. The, I think he's looking very good. He's uh, shaking off uh, tacklers, not going down with the first one and struggling for yards. What do you make of signals uh, being uh, picked up? And does it matter? Sometimes things are going so well, it doesn't matter if the opponents uh, pick it up. You see Howard and Bishop both getting knocked off their feet, but I don't think so. Uh, you usually have Kubiak and another person, or maybe even Dan Reeves, motioning, giving some signals, and you don't know which one is giving the live signal and which one is just faking it. So it's very difficult to pick them up. It is a third and goal at the one. Sewell out of the eye, and here's Sewell, and he has stopped short of the goal line. 90, Bob Ham getting underneath the offensive line for the Broncos and getting penetration and not allowing Sewell to get off the ground. And a field goal attempt coming up. It's been a non-pressure day for Rich Carlos, who did connect to win the game against Seattle last week, but going into that what turned out to be the final kick. He was one for four on the day. So here is Carlos, and he's actually going for his third. He's two for two, 24 and 23. 19-yard field goal by Carlos, who is now three out of three. So the Broncos extend the lead over the Chiefs to 30 to 10. situation here Todd Blackledge who had a rough day uh, last week against the LA Rams intercepted six times but back to the bench today but John Elway uh, the kid who was able to hang in despite some adversity earlier in his career knowing that he'd be out there the following week there's two ways to learn one is by playing and one is by sitting and watching and uh, Elway is learning by experience and I think that's probably the best way to learn because when you have an opportunity to get in and make a mistake, you can learn from that mistake. Whereas if you're on the sidelines, such as Blackledge is trying to learn that way, you don't get an opportunity to make those mistakes. He made six of them last week, and uh, you'd like to get back out there on the field and correct them. Bill Kenny back in the lineup today, coming back from the knee injury. And the kickoff by Thomas, taken by Jeff Smith. Smith out near. The 25-yard line, he was tripped up by Ricky Hunley, the backup linebacker in his second season out of Arizona. 11-17 left in this fourth quarter. And the Broncos leading the Chiefs by the score of 30-10. to Looking for their first win in four years in Kansas City. Leading the Chiefs to the line. He has Auer and Oldham at the guards. Leach and Alt at the tackles. Some jumping. So they get back. And Kenny to put it up first down. This is Herman Hur. Finding some daylight for the first down across the 35. Rulon Jones on the tackle. A 13-yard pickup. Almost a must-pass situation now as we look at the backs. Herman Hurd, 44, setting up. Now he's just going to sneak out. He's trying to sneak out. Tom Jackson, 57, grabbed a hold of him as he read the play. But Hurd got loose and, and made a good run. But they almost need to pass first now and just run draws if they're going to run anything. First down of the 37-yard line. Hurd and Pruitt in the backfield. Here's Hurd. A sneaky handoff from Kenny. Draw play. It was the old Statue of Liberty almost. It was a, a draw play that sets up in, uh, inside and you start off and go around to the outside. But you're trying to get the linebackers to hold. But Hurd has done pretty well today rushing 12 for 47 yards. And that's almost a four yard average as we look at the draw that develops late around in. And uh, Kansas City has to throw the ball and mix in their draw play. Seven yard play, second down three at the 44. As they go slot right. And Kenny is brought down again. Rulon Jones, his second of the day, number eight on the season. Last year, Jones led the Broncos with 11 sacks. Rulon Jones having another excellent year. 
uh, Rula knows that the Kansas City Chiefs have to pass, and uh, this is the problem that the Chiefs had in their, their offensive line to the left side with our starting for Brad Buddy and Baldinger in there for uh, Herkenhoff, and uh, now it's in a pass-only uh, pass situation, and uh, it's gonna be kind of tough to keep him out. Third down, about 13. Kenny operating out of the shotgun. And flags thrown. And it looks to be a procedure penalty. Full start, number 77, offense, third down. And that was Baldinger. He's over there with Rulon Jones in Mecklenburg, and he just wanted to get a little head start on him. And Kenny putting it up. And we'll see the punting unit. And I wonder if we'll see Todd Blackledge with uh, John McAvick perhaps looking to have uh, Blackledge get some added experience. I think if he feels as though the game is out of reach, we may very well see uh, Blackledge, but uh, uh, I don't think Blackledge or Kenny can do any good because they just don't have the time to throw. And Arnold, who has had two punts blocked, not looking to go for the hat trick. <laughs> and the return by Vance Johnson. So a timeout, Denver back uh, to the offense, 40-yard punt. 14-yard return by Johnson. First down from the 44-yard line. They lead the Chiefs 30 to 10, putting it away in the first quarter. Steve Sewell stopped by Mike Bell and a check back at how Denver has done it. Will Height with two touchdowns. It was 10-0 after one on the first of three field goals by Carlos. Lang has had a great day. Will Height did suffer a concussion late in the first half, so. Uh, he was forced out. Uh, the one touchdown for Kansas City, that one-yard punt by Horton. And here in the second half, the field goal by Lowry, and then the 19-yarder earlier this fourth quarter by Thomas. Second and 10. And Elway able to complete over the middle to Gene Lang. Ken Jolly had the wraps around Lang. It's interesting that all of Denver's scoring, too, Marv, has been on the ground. And it was uh, set up, uh, two of them were set up by the, uh, the blocked uh, punts. The offense is changing a little bit. There's more uh, more running. Uh, Dan Reeves says he wanted to control the ball more today, and he certainly has done that. I think what they're doing is taking some of the pressure away from Elway. He doesn't have to carry this team. Let the offense, let the run get involved in it. And Dan Reeves and his Denver Broncos now with a third down and five. At the 49. did not work. <laughs> Didn't fool anybody, particularly Robinson and uh, Ross, both the uh, safeties in their blitzing. So coming around, and uh, Ross leading the way right there. Crowd of 68,248 on hand. Capacity here, shade over 78,000. Wonder how many folks will make it a, a twin bill and head across the way to watch uh, Brett Saberhagen and John Tudor go at each other tonight in game number seven. Last week they had a similar situation in the first game, and I think uh, about 8,000 attended both games. Bob checking it all out. Very good. Here's Chris Norman. And uh, another good punt by Norman. Garcia Lane let it go. And they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. This one goes down as a 60-yard punt for Norman. Timeout called six and a half remaining for and a 60-yard punt by Chris Norman. Here are the Chiefs, first down from their 20. Denver in front, 30 to 10. They put this one away early. Leading it 27-7 at the half. With Kenny remaining in at quarterback. Out of the shotgun. Six and a half left, fourth quarter. And the swing to Pruitt. to the 28, stopped by the free safety, Tony Lilly has done a good job replacing 
the injured Steve Foley, this Lily's third straight start. He certainly has done a good job. He is uh, the third leading tackler on the team, so you know he's getting involved, and they say he's always around the ball, has one interception, and uh, it's uh, Denver has a lot of good defensive backs. Uh, Robbins and uh, Lilly filling in very well. Second about one, and Pruitt picks up the first down and some more. Twisting and turning his way, Carl Mecklenburg on the stop. A tackle by the Carl NFL Lundberg. scoreboard. Fourth quarter, Giant Stadium. Seattle in front of the Jets, 14-7. Jets have never beaten Seattle in seven tries. And Detroit leading Miami, 31-21 in the fourth. Chicago adding to its lead. 27 over the Vikings. Washington beating Cleveland. That's uh, the right guard, Bob Olderman, down. Is shaken up. Washington leading Cleveland in the fourth. St. Louis and Houston in the third, and the Cardinals in front. Dallas coming from behind. They now lead Atlanta in the third quarter. And New England extending its lead. They came from behind. They lead Tampa Bay in the fourth. Buffalo in front of Philadelphia. So the Eagles have closed the margin. And the Colts leading Green Bay in the fourth quarter, 27-10. And our story, Denver all over Kansas City. Five and a half remaining, fourth quarter. First down for the Chiefs from that 39-yard line. Here's Pruitt with the break inside. And uh, you can hear the complaints from the fans wondering why go on the ground. Well, I think two reasons. Number one, you're working on your offense for the future with Pruitt, a good running back for nine years in the National Football League. Let him get the feel of it. The other thing is, Alderman just came off the field. That's four out of your five uh, offensive linemen haven't been injured or replaced going into the ball game. So his protection is a little suspect at this point. Major question, will that man who you saw, John Makovic, will he be serving hot lunches this week to his Kansas City Chiefs? It's cold, man. It's cold. Cold mustard. Second down three, and the Chiefs pick up the first down. Stephon Page with his second reception. Lewis Wright on the tackle. Stephon Page in his third season out of Fresno State. And Kenny unleashes, but caught by Henry Marshall. Mecklenburg on the coverage. This telecast being presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience and a rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Kansas City Chiefs and the National Football League is prohibited. Now to 420, remaining fourth quarter. Second down and 10 for the Chiefs at the Denver 47. The strong safety, Randy Robbins. Randy Robbins, who uh, set the tone early with those two block punts and also recovered one. Look at the two quarterbacks, their 85 average on the left, and how they're doing today. Elway, what, 144 yards under what he's doing, but yet they're winning by 20, and Kenny way below his normal uh, average uh, per game. from the crowd, third down and five at the 42. And Kenny goes incomplete. Anthony Hancock, the intended receiver. Anthony Hancock has been an invisible man for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, fourth year out of Tennessee, a number one draft pick back in 82, but a major uh, disappointment. In fact, he is uh, no longer running back kicks. No, he's not. He's not getting in very often on... Uh on the receiving downs, but you know, it's, it's tough as you crack in to, to come in the National Football League. You've got a lot of speed, but it takes more than speed. you got to have moves and uh, be at the right place at the right time. And Hancock now and the lineup uh, lined up slot right with uh, Carson to the right. They go four wide receivers. And he throws the middle and tended for Page. Dennis Smith with the hit. Not allowing the reception all over Stefan Page. 
And that is it for this uh, Kansas City series. Watch the protection right here with Olderman and Auer, the two young guards that we talked about going into the ball game. Olderman 64 doing a pretty good job. And we will see Gary Kubiak take over for John Elloway when we return after the word. At the 42-yard line, that's right, 87 in motion. And here's Steve Sewell. Elway goes 12 for 19, 111 yards, playing it very conservatively. Uh, just tried that one long bomb, but Denver has done it effectively on the ground and mixing up its play. Strong lineup next week here on NBC. Next Sunday, an exciting football doubleheader. In the first game, most of you will see the AFC Eastern battle. New England Patriots take on Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins. And the second part of the doubleheader, Raiders at the Seattle, Denver playing at San Diego, and the Jets playing the Colts in Indianapolis. Second down and five from the 47. Again, right, peels off. And again to the ground, it's Sewell at midfield. Dave Lindstrom on the stop. Gary Kubiak had taken only one snap from center prior to uh, this series this season. Eighth round draft pick back in 83 out of Texas A&M. He started two games last year for the injured John Elway. His shining moment leading Denver to an overtime victory over the Raiders. Almost a year to the day, October the 28th. And he's done a very good job, Marv. He is, when he has come in and had to play, he has done very good. He came out the same year Elway and Blackledge and Reno. He was in the class of 83, but you never hear about him because he was an eighth-round draft choice. As a third down and two. And to throw for the first time. And he has the tight end right for the first down. Pass from Gary so the first down picked up by Denver, Greg Hill. In the game, so the timeout is called. We'll be back. Dan Reeves doing some smiling today. He and John Elway along the sidelines are certainly enjoying this one as Gary Kubiak is uh, taken over. Fans have filed out. Young of fellow says, "I've seen enough. <laughs> I'm going home and watch Punky Brewster." Incidentally, uh, Elway and his wife. Janet celebrated the birth of their daughter last week, Jessica Gwen Elway. And uh, John had kind of an easy day today. Oh, he really did. He, uh, I'm sure the relief of uh, the baby and everything being all right uh, was a relief off of his mind. And then also coming in and not having Sammy Winder and running very well and playing well offensively uh, was a big relief for him also. First down of the 43-yard line, Steve Sewell. Sewell and Lang have done it on the ground. Gary Spaney on the stop. See the clock running down. You know, we talked about Kubiak and how well he has done. And then, of course, uh, uh, John Elway. I'll get back to that after this uh, break. All right, we'll be back. Right after resume, Denver, second down and six at the Kansas City 39. And here's Sewell. Out of the 35-yard uh, line, short of the uh, first down. A long day for this man, Kansas City head coach John Makovic, talking about the Elways giving birth. The 13 Kansas City Chiefs became fathers in the offseason, prompting uh, Makovic to say, if we do as well on the field as we uh, did in the maternity ward, we'll have a great season. <laughs> At this point, it hasn't turned out in that direction. The way they played today, he may have a baby. I don't know. <laughs> Six of Denver's ten possessions have started at their own 40 or better. Give you an idea of what their field position has been like. Third and one for Sewell. And he's near that uh, first down marker, Lloyd Burris, on the stop. Under a minute to go. In the ball game, getting back to a point we began to discuss, the difference for John Elway with having a Gary Kubiak as opposed to the veteran uh, Steve DeBerg, although the Broncos needed the veteran experience uh, during Elway's first and second years, I would think less pressure on Elway. I think it was more of a liability having DeBerg around because he was the veteran always looking over his shoulder, and I think once they traded him to Tampa, then Elway really said, well, the job is mine. 
no real pressure. You know, two quarterbacks, are they a luxury or a liability? I think in Miami with Marino and Strzok, the veteran, he knows his place, no competition. And the Berg has done well at uh, Tampa Bay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you saw some of the. And Reeves the last couple of years came in with an 8-4 record. As you see, the deep men for Pittsburgh.